With the events in the world as they are, people are starting to wonder, who are the witnesses and when will they show up? I'm David Brutt with John Fisher bringing you Revealing the Truth. The two witnesses, the end of the age, uh, prophecy, what's happening in the world, what's happening even here in this country. Mm. People are asking some questions about Bible and uh, prophecy and, and are digging in, I think, a little bit deeper. Uh, this program, Revealing the Truth, is certainly not necessarily for the novices. It's, it's for those that actually are willing to open up their Bibles and, and take a look. And we want that from our audience. We don't want people to just listen to what we're saying and then go, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I guess it's okay, or I guess <laughs> it's right. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> no, <laughs> we want you to prove, be like a Berean and see if these things are, are true, what we're saying. Yeah. But uh, prophecy is, is such that we can't always pinpoint it exactly, but I, I think there's plenty of evidence for what we're showing today. Yeah. I would just to add to what you were saying, sure. Romans 3 verse 4 says, let Yahweh be true and every man a liar. Hey, so, there you go. <laughs> so so um, uh, when, when I read that, um, it, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I realized that I had to set aside everything that I've been taught, set aside, I mean, who could forget, but yeah. we set aside everything that we were taught and read the scripture for what it says. I mean, if this book is true, then we need to get our revelation, our understanding, and our witness from here, mm -hmm. not from a person speaking behind the podium. Yeah, and we've, we've really been looking into revelation. We've been looking at, into the witnesses. Uh, we've been talking about the, the early and latter reigns, the previous episode. Uh, just to cap, I mean, we were looking at the, the says the two witnesses in Revelation 11, uh, there and, and scripture throughout talks about like the two houses, the two nations, two sisters, two branches, two sticks. We even talked about the two loaves of Pentecost, those being the first fruits and, and certainly we desire to be first fruits after we're changed, uh, you know, if we make it and overcome to the end. And that's, that's another theme, you overcome, it, it just doesn't happen instantaneous. In Revelation uh, 2 and 3 you find the, the promises to those who overcome, even to be able to set on the throne of Joshua as the king of kings. <laughs> well, king of kings, so I guess we'll be kings. Uh, I mean, it, it talks about mm. a, na a priestly nation, a, um, a kingdom of priests, and if there's a kingdom of priests, there's going to be, you know, king, of course, but it uh, looks like there's going to be some rulership uh, that's going to be shared. Yeah, I like what you're saying about uh, the, the, the righteous will be, I mean, if you read in chapters 2 and 3 in the book of Revelation, uh, Joshua is speaking to John to send a message to seven uh, assemblies, uh, which is uh, in cur uh, current day Turkey, which was Assyria, which is the house of Israel. Okay, I can get off on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked about Israel too, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, um, we also talked about how the, the, t the two houses, the house of Judah and the house of Israel, will one day be brought back together. And uh, the house of Judah is symbolized by the, by the, uh, the, the Jewish people of Judaism and the, the, the house of Israel by uh, Christianity, uh, those who wor worship the Messiah of Israel according to his ways and following in his path. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we talked previously about the seal on the forehead of, of Yahweh's people and that, that sealing process going right up to the end uh, of prior to the tribulation, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's going to open up the floodgates of Yahweh's wrath. Mm -hmm. And at, at that time, you know, what's going to happen to the people? Well, it, you know, we, we looked at them not, you know, Yahweh's people not being taken out of 
tribulation, but actually being in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the fifth trumpet is a prime example. Those without the seal of, of Yahweh received of plagues. Well, it goes back to Egypt. I mean, uh, outside of Egypt was, were, were those of Goshen, uh, Israel were, were living there in that, that area. But uh, they all received of the plagues uh, initially, but then Yahweh started making a distinction between his people and the people of Egypt is quite dramatic. Uh, I think he's going to do the same thing at the end of the age because it appears that Yahweh is about patterns and we, we find duality or uh, prophecy uh, that happens once in one area and then happens again in another area. So there's not only the exodus, but there's the great exodus <laughs> that appears to be happening even now with people coming out of confusion, out of mm -hmm. Egypt and out of uh, false ways of worship to worship Yahweh the way he wants. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the desire, uh, you know, Moses told Pharaoh, look, you know, <laughs> speaking for Yahweh, let my people go so they can come and worship mm -hmm. me. So that's, uh, that's what's going on today, I think. Right, mm -hmm. the scripture talks about how uh, we won't be known as, uh, uh, as followers of Yahweh who brought us out of Egypt, but brought us out of the four corners of the world to Jerusalem, to the idea, uh, um, I should say, to the law of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. I think we should probably take a look at the, at the uh, timing of the tribulation. And my understanding has, has grown in this area. I, I was thinking the tribulation was a seven-year period, but really the timing of the seven-year period appears to be a promise or a, a covenant guaranteed that through the man of sin, uh, this, this beast that's coming. Uh, Daniel 9, uh, in verse 27, And he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until a complete destruction, one that is decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh, the one week, I think most scholars recognize that is, is uh, talking about like a seven-year period. But in the midst of that, he breaks the covenant by going into the Holy of Holies and showing himself as, as a phony. And uh, people are going to be, you know, Judah, of course, is going to be woken up to that fact. And I think the rest of the, the world will uh, appear to come to some understanding about it. But um, that's going to be a three and a half year period then if it's going to be at the end. So, um, you know, all this is kind of, you know, we're, we're still learning, I, I think. But the three and a half year period keeps coming up. We uh, originally mentioned that in Revelation uh, 11, 3 through 4, where it talks about the three and a half years of the witnessing of, the, of these two witnesses. But it doesn't say two individuals necessarily. It doesn't say two persons. So the theme of Israel throughout Scripture from Genesis to Revelation, I mean, is it, is, are we talking about a, a people's plural? Um, and, of course, Israel can be broken up into the northern ten tribes, southern uh, two tribes, uh, Judah dominant, Ephraim dominant, dominant of those. Uh, a lot of people don't realize the significance, the significance of the, the holy convocations of Yahweh, the seven holy convocations throughout the year. Uh, the first and last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pentecost, atone, uh, Trumpets, Atonement, the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, and the last great day, or the eighth day. These are all, this, these are, this is the, um, um, the plan of salvation. Y Yahshua came and fulfilled the first three, the first day of uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, the last, and the day of Pentecost. He was the Passover lamb. He died on Passover. And the next day was not a weekly Sabbath. It was a high Sabbath, as the book of John tells us. And... Um, he, he died as the Passover lamb. He took the, the leavening out of us, the sin out of us. And that's what the, the significance of unleavened bread is. He gave us the spirit uh, at Pentecost uh, to give us the strength to endure to the end and, um, and in obedience to Yahweh and, and, and obeying the law. He's coming back. And the last four of these holy convocations speak to 
that prophecy that uh, the day of trumpets basically is when he's going to return. That's what we believe. The day of atonement is when he's going to collect those who are worshipers of Yahweh. All Israel will be uh, gathered together. As Paul tells us, um, the, the, the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles begins a week celebration, which, t which signifies the thousand-year reign of the Messiah, and then the, what we call the last great day or the eighth day after the Tabernacles is the white throne judgment where evil <clears throat> will be put away and the rest of eternity then begins. Um, but people don't understand that. They, they don't, these are rehearsals for the real thing. Yeah. How, yeah. how will we be able to teach in the kingdom if we ourselves haven't done the things of Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Because the law of Yahweh is going to go forth from Zion. Right. Everyone, even Egypt, if they don't come up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, for, mm -hmm. for example, Egypt will be there, some other nations, but uh, also others will be coming in, physical people, but the spiritual people will be teaching them, and yeah. they'll be taught to come up and keep tabernacles, for example, one of the right. appointed times of Yahweh. Right. And the Messiah is going to rule. You recall that? He's going to rule in that thousand-year reign with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. I wonder what law he's going to be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it's, it, it's, it's, it's ludicrous to yeah. think that there's some other law, uh, or, or even the law of grace, because there are people who are going to be born during that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will rule <laughs> over the, the, the land. Yeah. Uh, with the law of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. he, he will not go against it, yeah. and neither should we. No. And, but before that time, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be trouble for Israel. Uh, Jeremiah 30, 5 through 7, For thus says Yahweh, I've heard a sound of terror, a dread, and there is no peace. Ask now, and see if a male can give birth. Why do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in childbirth? And why have all faces turned pale? Alas, for that day is great. There is none like it, and it is the time of Jacob's distress. But he will be saved out of it. Okay, mm -hmm. so Israel is going to go through this distress, but uh, we find that uh, there's going to be a, a spiritual people, essentially, and a physical people brought into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, spiritual people is first fruits, the and. You know, the physical people is, is a remnant, I think, uh, in, in part. But Revelation um, gives us insight, it, 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 and it works with Daniel and prophecies of Jeremiah and, and other areas. Uh, we see uh, parallels. Uh, but this man of sin is going to be a problem. And uh, Revelation 13, 5 says, And there was given to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given him to continue Forty and two months. So again, this three and a half years. There's a number of things uh, that we find in, in Revelation 12, for example. There's a woman that's mentioned, but it's not just uh, a woman of Israel. It's a woman of Judah, uh, the whole 12 tribes. We want to encourage our viewers and listeners to go through some of these things and consider Israel and to consider the witnesses as being possibly the, the Israel. So when will the witnesses show up? It looks like the three and a half year period just before Yasra's return is going to be intense and there's going to be a spiritual battle occurring and the witnesses will be there. Did you know that the Heavenly Father's name has been purposely covered up in the Bible almost 7,000 times? It was done in an effort to protect people from blaspheming the sacred name. But because of this doctrine, people have broken the third commandment. It's time to come out of man-made errors and into the true worship of Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. To learn more, request your free in-depth study entitled The Mistaken J. Write to YAIY. 2963 County Road 233, Kingdom City, Missouri 65262, or visit us online at yaiy.org. You may also call toll-free 1-877-642-4101. Let's take a closer look at Revelation 12. Let's consider the three and a half years. Revelation 12 verses 5 through 6. 
And she bore a child, this woman, this mention, who was to shepherd all nations with a rod of iron. Who is this speaking of? Mm -hmm. And her child was caught away to Elohim and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she was, uh, where she has a place prepared by Elohim to be nourished there 1,260 days. So three and a half years. But the woman in reference to Yahshua here, clearly, is of Judah. Now that is part of Israel, but it's not the whole of Israel. It's just one tribe. Going on in Revelation 12, uh, uh, 13 through 14, this uh, Judah receives protection. And it says, And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle, so as she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time, time, and half a time. Again, three and a half years. But this is Judah. And, of course, Judah is instructed by Messiah, when you when you see the abomination of desolation set up, head for the hills. Well, that's specifically for those in Jerusalem, and that would be Judah. Now, non-Messianic Jews who might, uh, these might be non-Messianic Jews who have read the New Testament. There are some that have understand that, but there would be other Messianic ones that would be certainly aware of that. But they're teaching a, a name over there uh, Yeshua, and I'm just wondering if the reason this is going to come about for them this way is because they're not actually calling upon the proper name. They, they, Yahweh's name has been deleted. Uh, Yeshua is a form. In fact, I was just watching a, uh, a program that was talking about the Talmud, and, and they, they showed uh, Yeshu, which is mm -hmm. Uh, David Stern in his N New Testament commentary says that's an acronym for may his name be blotted out. That's what it, that's what Yeshu means. And I'm just, you know, it, it seems to be a smoking gun for the idea that this, the doctrine of ineffability, the, the idea that his name is too holy to pronounce, has translated into uh, the, the Savior's name too and eliminated the, the Father's name out of it. In, in many Bibles, if you read in the preface, it'll say that the covenant name is omitted <laughs> because of uh, Jewish tradition. And you have to ask yourself, why did the Messiah, Yahshua, say to the Pharisees that they are a brood of vipers, snakes, um, that they worship in the house of Satan and that their father is the devil? I mean, these are really harsh words, but why did he say that to them? because he came up with doctrines that were contrary and covered up the law of his father, of, Yahweh's, of Yahshua's father, Yahweh Almighty. That's why he called them names and said that, that you will die in your sins hmm. without, uh, without believing in him and without uh, following his path, which yeah. is the path that Yahweh has given to us. So if, if we make up our own traditions, and especially if those traditions are the ways of the nations, how much trouble are we in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting. Paul, uh, the, thinking of the time period, three and a half years, uh, you know, three years plus, the Apostle Paul went away for about that amount of time, evidently to study the scriptures and, and consider mm -hmm. Messiah in them and, and, and Yahweh's overall plan. Um, and so... You know, is this what Yahweh is going to allow for Judah that come out into a, a place of safety? Are they going to be instructed? Are they going to re-examine Isaiah 53 and, mm -hmm. and these other scriptures and, and think about what Yahweh is doing? Are they going to see uh, Revelation 12 revealed to them as evidently Yahweh is starting to reveal to us? Yeah. But uh, as we go into Revelation 12 verse 17, we find something very interesting says, then the dragon became furious after Judah is protected. It says, uh, he says, became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of Yahweh and hold to the testimony of Yahshua. And he stood on the sand of the sea. <laughs> okay, uh, go back to Re uh, Revelation 12.1. It talks about the woman with the 12 stars. Okay, that's all of Israel, I think, 
is essentially what it's referring to. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you can see Judah being referred to and also the rest of Israel being referred to in Revelation 12. But you have to understand the, the 12 tribes descend, descending from Jacob, the, from Isaac, Isaac, going all the way back to Abraham, uh, who the promises are through. Okay, Yahweh is not a breaker of promises. He's working out his promises for Israel, and it's throughout Scripture. We have to be aware of that. Um, interestingly enough, you know, going back, we, we see that, uh, you know, Revelation 11, 6 through 7, they have the power to shut up the heavens so it will not give rain during the time that they are prophesying. They have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Okay, who is, who is Satan coming after after Judah was protected? He's coming after the rest of the children, the ones who keep the commandments, have faith in Yahshua. Mm -hmm. It's very significant when you start to see this puzzle being put together, you get a very clear, pretty clear picture of uh, what's coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be intense. It's going to be uh, terrible. Uh, it talks about the witnesses being clothed in sackcloth. If you ever look at, at the, the Holocaust and, and some of the images there, the mm -hmm. people in, in uh, you know, cages, uh, they look like they're in sackcloth. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not going to be a pretty time. And uh, the day of Yahweh, which is referring to the Great Tribulation. Uh, I think it's this whole time period of, you know, mm. three and a half years, essentially, mm. where Satan is going to be empowering the, the man of sin and uh, false prophet and all this and that. But Yahweh is also going to be empowering his people with his spirit. And it's, it's not by our might or by our strength, it's, but it's by my spirit, says Yahweh, essentially is what... Uh, what Yahweh says. But in Revelation 11, 8 through 9, it says, And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, symbolically called Sodom in Egypt, where their master was crucified for three and a half, or was impaled, uh, put to death. For three and a half days, some of the peoples and tribes and languages and nations will gaze at their, bot their dead bodies and refuse to let them be placed in the tomb. Okay? And it talks about them, you know, people giving gifts and, you know, Maybe the time of Christmas, maybe the time of Hanukkah. Uh, it was cold, maybe for where the bodies could be left out. These are some interesting things to be. Uh, one to interesting think about. part of that is that uh, Messiah was, uh, ex you know, executed in Egypt. I, mean, I thought it was Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> well, symbolic. It, symbolic Egypt. Yeah, and right. Sodom. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, did you know they even have gay parades in Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's amazing what goes on in the, in the world. And there's even slavery in, in this country. There's things behind the scenes, and, and some things are just open. Right. Uh, but um, it, it's terrible. And, and, and Yahweh's not going to continue putting up with it. I mean, he didn't put up with Israel's disobedience in the past. Why would he put up with Israel's disobedience in the future? Uh, the wrath of Yahweh is coming because of a disobedient world that it no longer seeks him, yeah. no longer wants to do as well, just a, a handful. Uh, and, but this is the way Yahweh has worked things out. From Adam and Eve, there's only two there. For, you know, Noah, there's only eight on the ark. Uh, Yahshua only chose 12 disciples, uh, 70 after that. And then he split them up, put them in twos, sent them out. Um, you know, so is the number 144,000 of Revelation 14, is that, is that a literal number? Could be. Over the span of time, 144,000 is uh, going to be first fruits in the kingdom. Wow. Well, There's also a multitude there. May, may Yahweh's will be done, yeah, in the multitude. So, you know, maybe that's the, the bride's maids. That have come in, the virgins that have come in. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's interesting to think about these things. We don't, we don't, we don't know exactly how it's all going to work out, but I think we're learning more as time goes on. Uh, Daniel twelve seven through eight says, "I heard a man dressed in linen who was above the waters of the river, as he raised his right hand and his left hand towards heaven, and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time, time, and time, or half a time, three and a half years." 
And as soon as they, as they finish shattering the power of the holy people, all these events will be completed. Shattered, that's like breaking apart, being killed, for example. Mm -hmm. But as for me, I heard and could not understand, so I said, Master, what will be the outcome of these things? Well, uh, the book was sealed, the scroll was sealed, but it's being loosened up, and we're starting to, I think, slowly see more of what's going to be happening in the future, in the near future even. Mm -hmm. Revelation 11, 11 through 12, But after three and a half years, the breath of life from Yahweh came into them, after three and a half days, uh, the breath of life, th these are coming into the witnesses here, came into them and they stood on their feet and great fear fell upon those who were watching them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, come up here. And then they went up into heaven in the cloud and their enemies watched them. Okay, this is at the end of the three and a half year period, evidently, just the prior. The first three and a half years. Uh, or, no, actually, the, I think this goes into the last three and a half oh, years. Okay. Of the, okay. I just yeah. After the man of sin, you know, goes into the Holy of Holies. Oh, I see. Right. That, that type right, of right. thing, yeah. So this is coming right up to um, the end of the age mm -hmm. and Yahshua's return. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly enough, when we go over to Zechariah 14.5, you know, putting these pieces of puzzle together so we can kind of get a picture, it says, then you shall flee through my mountain valley, and the mountain valley shall reach Azel. Yes, you shall flee as you fled. Well, let's back up to verse 4. Uh, Zechariah 14, 4. And in the day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faced Jerusalem to the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half toward the south. Verse 5. Then you shall flee through my holy valley, the, uh, for the mountain valley shall reach Azal. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Thus Yahweh, my Elohim, will come and all the saints with you. So the saints come back with the Messiah. Okay? Does that go back to the two witnesses? Does that go back to Israel? Are these things all coming about together to give us a better idea of what's coming? Hmm. Well, it could be that the two witnesses are representative of the two tribes of Israel. It could be something else is being worked out. Hmm. But prophecy is not up for private interpretation. Yahweh's word explains itself. And I think we have to be grounded. And that's why we, we study, we, we seek these things out to know what Yahweh's will is. And we, we come before Him in prayer and we seek His Spirit to give insight. But who are the two witnesses? When are they coming? It's evidently going to be ahead of us. But for three and a half years, there's going to be witnessing.